Welcome back, lady listeners. Hey, lady listeners. Welcome, welcome. We have the second installment of Saddled by Shaw Hart. And we're going to play that for you in just a little bit. But before then, um, we have some lady listener emails. I've got a stack of them because we forgot to do them last week because we were talking so much on catching up. And then we were gone. So we have lots to discuss. All right. Some of them I pulled were older just because I was in there in that file and I just printed them off from there. All right. This one is from 2019, March 9, 2019. Can you imagine what was life back then? (laughs) (laughs) All right. This one's entitled Kink. Cara D introduced me to my daddy kink. I like the sound of this. Same girl. Same. (laughs) It says, hey, ladies, you wrote on the Read Me Romance headquarters that you wanted to know what books got us into any kink. Cara D introduced me into Daddy Kink, which I freaking love and can't live without now. I remember being very hesitant about it and got so surprised with how much I love it and that it got me going during the sexy times that she wrote. Was that too much information? I'm so sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. Forget I said that. She also introduced me to Mail Mail and H Gap. Love, love, love it. Anyway, this was several years ago, years ago, before she published any of her work, but I have found a whole new world in the book world, thanks to Kara, and I'm forever grateful, and I'll read everything she writes. I'd recommend everyone who likes Daddy Kink, Age Gap, and or MM to check out Kara's books. Thanks for an awesome podcast. You guys are always making me laugh. You've made me cry as well. Uh You've introduced me to a lot of authors and books I'd never heard of before with the audio books you have on the podcast and your own personal book recommendations slash the books you mentioned. Keep up the awesome work. Absolutely love the podcast. You all got a fan in in life in Sweden. Oh, my God. Sorry for the long email. Swedish lady listener, Sarah. Oh my God. He's right now. That. that was so sweet. And I would wholeheartedly agree with anything Carity writes if you're into daddy kink, male, male, age gap at all. She does a lot of male, male. Yep, um, she too. does. And she does it well. <laughs> I think one of the great series you can read by her is the Touch series. And she's mm-hmm. actually bundled it. And I don't know if people realize this, but with. In the bundle, which I didn't realize till I went back and one weekend, I was like, I'm going to go read the whole series because each one, each book is like 100 pages, 120 mm-hmm. pages. They're shorties, just like an Alexa Riley book yeah, or yeah. a Shaw Hart book or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, when you get to each book, like a book ends, you get a little section about this other couple. And these mm-hmm. in between each book, you are getting this other story. Of a whole nother cook. So technically there's another book inside the touch series yeah. bundle that you hadn't gotten, but it's in between. So it's not like you can go pick it up and just yeah. read. But it's mm-hmm. kind of playing out along the same timeline because it's something's really intersect. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what's also great about that series is there is a lot of stuff that you're introduced to of different kinks in that series that mm-hmm. I didn't think I was into that I was like. Oh, wow. There's one guy where it's a menage and um, he daddies both of them, like a girl mm-hmm. and a boy. And I don't know. It's just a whole series. Like, there's, <laughs> there's single ones where it's just kind yeah. of a more BDSM one and just it's a really great series. I agree. It's awesome. I still have my signed copy. <laughs> it's on my shelf. I actually, me. when I was redoing my office, I could mm-hmm. only do about 10 books on this one shelf that would mm-hmm. show them out. And that mm-hmm. was one of them that made it. Of course. And it's a thick <laughs> man. And it was oh, it's in a, like two you could or put three, three books. I was going to say, you could put three books in that spot. <laughs> so I was like, no, this one has to be here. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a good one. All right. This one's entitled Marriage Proposal. Hello, lady podcasters. Please keep me anonymous and share this with, oh, I guess like send this email. Only us are supposed to see this email. (laughs) I read a lot and wish I could read stories where the heroine is not perfect on that day like me. I've been with my boyfriend since 2009 and last year he proposed as a surprise on a family gathering. We were doing Secret Santa with his family a few days ahead of Christmas. 
For that day, we came up with the idea of dressing up really nice and taking a few photos. Guess who shows up with an almost decent hair day? Everyday clothes, oh, with almost decent hair, everyday clothes, and not even lip gloss? Yeah, me. I remember going to the bathroom and then thinking, I should at least wash under my nails in case he proposes. Then looked at myself in the mirror and was like, ha, ah, sure, bitch, because my hunch had been wrong at least four times before. Well, it was something very romantic in the end for someone who isn't considered very romantic. He said things that still make me tear up a little because it was so beautiful. But the first thing I remember about the day I had been waiting on since I was 17 is, fuck, my nails were dirty as fuck. <laughs> I look like shit. <laughs> Best regards from Honduras. And he still asked you. And he still asked you. I love that. That's so cute and very real and relatable. <laughs> All right. This one's entitled episode 19.5, Being Shamed for Liking Romance. Hello, ladies. I'm a week behind on the podcast. This was in 2019 as well. I'm a week behind on the podcast, but I was so compelled by this topic. I couldn't help but share. You asked for some experience with being shamed for liking romance, and I had a very visceral reaction to your stories because whenever I think about that particular experience, it makes my stomach turn. I was in nursing school sitting in my instructor's office, nervous as fuck because she's asking personal questions quote, to determine which clinical group would be the f best fit. And when I told her that I liked reading, she naturally followed up with, what do you read? I hate when people do that. <laughs> so I tried to sidestep saying that I haven't had much time to read anything other than textbooks, but I went so blank on my usual vague answers that I ended up saying, actually, I like romance novels. And the way she looked at me, I can't even explain it to you. I wanted to throw myself outside her damn window. I don't remember exactly how she responded, but it was something along the lines of, oh, you like that trash. I swear to God, I could barely look her in the eye the rest of the semester. The rest of my nursing career, really. What really pisses me off when I remember it is that isn't it when I remember it isn't that she was just so judgmental, but the fact that I let her make me feel so small for something I enjoyed. When people in my class were smothering themselves in the drama of Grey's Anatomy, but I was somehow worse because I read romance that didn't yeah, make me... that's a good me, fucking point. Yeah, that didn't make me gouge my eyes out from the damn misery. I like my happily ever afters. I like warm, fuzzy feels. I'm so happy you ladies feel so strongly about being proud of romance. Have an amazing weekend. Joy. Why haven't I ever thought... God, I'm glad know. you just pointed that out to I me. I know. That's I a, never that's a even great thought point. about that. Mm-hmm. That's a really valid point, too, that, that people will watch this other drama, and it's totally fun. Grey's Anatomy, fun. where these men sometimes are horrible. <sighs> yeah. And then they eat it up when it's like, that's it's toxic as fuck. When it's like, I just want a happily ever after. I want a sweet love yeah, story, and yeah. I'm the idiot. I'm the dummy. Yeah, they're like, oh, my mm -hmm. God. So they watch this toxic stuff, and then we read sweet romance. They're like, that gives you a false thing on relationship <laughs> but we should have the toxic one instead okay got it got it um it's funny that i go to a chiropractor and he was like cracking me like a glow stick this week and um when i was in there he like i told him what i do before okay. you know i told him i'm a writer and i appreciated that he just doesn't follow up with it he just doesn't seem to care he's just like okay mm -hmm. and so at this time i asked him questions though i said can you tell me like what's the best position to like sit in at my desk i want to make sure because i actually got this thing that like helps my desk stand up like mm -hmm. so i can do a standing and working and stuff because he said i needed to sit down and stand up and do it repeatedly and i was like i can't work like that so anyway so i was telling about it, and then he was like you know i have a friend that's a publisher i ought to give you his card and i was like oh you know it's okay i self-publish and he was like no he's you know a really great guy he said he does a lot he says he's really good with his authors and stuff and i was like okay you know just to be nice like i took the card and i get out to the car and i look at it and this guy <laughs> He publishes like tactical equipment and like, <laughs> like, like army like stuff. Like, I was just like, what is, <laughs> what about? Because he asked me what books I wrote, and I told him I write romance. You know, mm -hmm. like, I, mean, I, I don't ever have a problem telling people that because I'm just like, fuck them. If they're gonna ask, they're gonna find out. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, what made him think? That a ro that this m m old man that studies like World War II history. <laughs> would want to publish like a book about a bitch that makes stuffed animals <laughs> you know like you know what i'm saying like what i was gonna bring up that book 
Because it's the most ridiculous. Ugh, but it's also one of my favorites ever. But I just thought that was funny. You know, like not being. A, and, and I thought it was very nice of the chiropractor. Like even though, you know, he he meant well by doing it. You know, he was trying to be nice. So I get it. But <sighs> people, people that realized, judge are assholes. What? Only because we're like recording this. You can watch us on YouTube. I went to take mm-hmm. a drink of my coffee, or my it's actually Dr. Pepper. It's not coffee, mm-hmm. but it's in a coffee cup. Yeah. Because I look older, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. coffee cup instead of a Dr. What does it Pepper. say? Nice cock. I just realized it says nice cock. Yeah. You didn't know that's what it said? I just said it was like a kitchen. You know, people always put weird cocks and birds on the wall. Who bought the that? Eagle. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it says nice cock. I did not realize that. <laughs> Until I went to take a sip and I see myself in the recording. I was like, oh, my cock means nice cock. It does. <laughs> Isn't it? Like, I, this cup all the time. I have the same thing. She sent me one and it has a duck on it and it says off underneath it. Like, duck off. Like, fuck off. They're like little See, I didn't get that things. one either when you said it. <laughs> the duck off. <laughs> yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one's entitled Proposal Story. My proposal story is just kind of sad. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't read this one. This is, My husband and I met right after he got out of the Navy, and he was still in the active services. We had only been dating a couple of months when he had to go to California for two weeks. We live in Texas. He called me while he was gone and said, I really don't want to be away from you anymore. Want to get married when I come home? I said, sure, why not? (laughs) We got married six months to the day from the day we met, and we'll be married for 25 years in October. Definitely not romantic, but hey, it worked. Oh, I'm glad I read that because that was actually kind of sweet. That turned out good. I love it. Okay, that would be hard having to be away all the time. I can't imagine. Like, you know, we live near military bases and stuff, and mm, I watch this 90 Day Fiance and I'm like, I don't know how you guys do it. I know. It's tough. All right. This one's entitled, I have a confession. Oh, this one's recent. 2022. Hello, ladies. First of all, I love y'all. I'm a Southern gal from Georgia now living in North Carolina. What's up, girl? I'm new to the podcast. I'm on episode 42.2 and I'm so in love. I'll get right to the confession. My husband and I have great have a great relationship. Honestly, it's pretty magical. He's my absolute best friend, and we have magical sex. Well, now she's just bragging. I know. <laughs> I've taken some of the things I learned from y'all's podcast, and it has made sex even better. I didn't think that was possible. However, that's now the confession. Here it goes. I think my husband's ex is still in love with him. Oh, no. She is married and they have a baby now. I'm not sure why it bothers me because I know he loves me and is loyal to me. I've never doubted his feelings for me, yet I can't shake this feeling that she still loves him. And secretly, I want her to know he's mine and basically I'm better than her. I mean, who doesn't, honestly? I hate hate feeling this way because she's another woman with feelings and I don't want to put her down. The reason I think she still has feelings for him is because she still texts him, Happy birthday, to which he never responds to those texts. On our first date, he took me to the fair, and when she found out, she texted him, How dare you take her there? This was back in 2014, when I was 19 and she was 22. Oh, and he was 22 and she was 23 and dating her current husband. To which she went to the same fair in 2012 um, with her now husband. In 2017, she drunk called him and said she made a mistake marrying her husband and wondered what it would be like if she stayed with him. She also cheated on my husband with her current husband, if that makes sense. Then in 2020, this face, his Facebook got hacked and she received her friend request from him. He doesn't use Facebook and I got the same request and mentioned it to him, which is when he told me that she texted him to let him know that he was hacked. My family is very close with her. They are from same, the same small town. So it's not like they can avoid each other. I see my mother-in-law interact on Facebook with her and it bothers me so much. And I just hate that it does. We talk about our exes. So he knows I'm a bit of a jealous person, but I'm not sure what I should do with all these feelings of wanting her to know he's mine and I'm his. I'm also not sure why I feel the need to make her know that I am better than her because he chose me. 
I'm sure it's an insecurity, but I also needed to vent to people who don't know me. Anyways, thanks for letting me type my feelings out into the group of strangers. I feel like I know y'all since I have been spending every day listening. Any advice would be lovely. Thanks for all you do. I'm not being a dick. I'm making the day my bitch and I'm fucking my day up. I will say, I don't know if I have advice, but mm-hmm. I will say I completely understand. Mm-hmm. And I would have every single feeling you are having right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the thing that stuck out to me the most is that she doesn't want to feel this way because she's another woman with feelings and I don't want to put her down. I think that says all that needs to be said about your character. Yeah. You know, I really do. I think that that speaks volumes about the type of person you are. And, you know, your husband can reassure you a hundred times a day. Mm -hmm. But if you don't feel that reassurance, if you don't feel confident and safe in who you are in your relationship, it doesn't matter what he says. It doesn't matter what he does. It, you know, actions or anything. This is internal. I think that she already knows you won because she said to him, Oh, I think I've made a mistake. I think she puts Mm -hmm. little things out there Mm -hmm. and he doesn't seem to be grabbing them. Yeah. So that is a clear indication to her. Mm -hmm. She feels that rejection. I promise you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But she still keeps trying to put it out there just because she's trying to hope that, oh, one day it's not going to be a good day or Mm -hmm. something. Yeah. But she already knows you have technically one because he's never grabbed at any of her little. Mm-hmm. pieces but I've done the same thing because mm-hmm. my husband has an ex that he was with before me and every now and then I'll go look at her Facebook and just just to see oh my mm-hmm. God, I still look scroll oh, through. a mess mm-hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> to make you feel better yeah you know, or I just I don't know every now and then I can't help it I mean I probably look at hers more than I do check on my old ex actually yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think that's the thing, too, is like, uh, you know, I really, truly, and though it's a cheesy saying, but I truly believe the best revenge is a life well lived. Yeah. Because I think people fucking hate to see you happy. Yeah. Especially the haters. They fucking hate and to see you happy. And they hate more if they think you don't ever think about them. I know. Like, that's, that probably makes it so much worse. Mind. Yeah. But, you know, so, again, that's uh, that's an outside perspective, you know. To make yourself feel better and to feel more secure in this, I mean, that's going to have to come from within. You yeah. know, I, I don't know what to say to make you feel more secure in your relationship, but just know that everybody feels insecure at some point. Everybody does in their relationship. It doesn't matter, you know, if they have exes that are reaching out to them or whatever, but I don't know. I mean, I mean it, on, you really won. She's doubting the man she's with right now. And yeah. she's going to live in that. She I mean, how much, that. I mean, honestly, if you look at how much more do you need to prove that you won? What, well, ask yourself that. What really would prove that you won, that you're better than her? What would, would prove that? I would also think that your husband probably thinks I dodged a fucking bullet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because this could sure. be him that she's reaching out to somebody else about mm-hmm. oh because she sounds like the girl that always thinks that the grass is green on the other yeah, side yeah yeah she cheated on your husband that's why she's mm-hmm. like oh this maybe i should have done that it's yeah. she's always gonna look for that regret and the chase mm-hmm. of the high of the excitement mm-hmm. of the cheating the excitement of a new relationship yeah i'm you know, surprised she's still with the husband yeah I mean, I, you know, some people just want to watch the world burn, you know, but I guess I just look at it like, you know, if you just listen to your own like internal voice and just know that you're giving her power by still considering this, by still considering her, by still thinking of her and allowing those thoughts to her, like to come into your mind, you're giving her that power. So you've got to take that power away. And in order to do that, you have to let it go. However you got to do that, that's what I would, that's my advice anyways. 
So. But I think you already won. I think I so mean, it's too. Clearly I mean, you're the clearly. one winning in this situation. Yeah. I'm, again, just to say, like, what would prove it? Like, that's the thing I like to ask myself sometimes when I'm really like stuck on mm -hmm. something, and I'm like, you know what? What would actually prove this to me? What? There's nothing. There's mm -hmm. nothing that you could give me that you could say that you could do. I have to convince myself. That's the only answer. Yeah. And I feel like but, that's the answer to this. Yeah. I just want you to know we all do this. You're not alone 100%. in this at all. At all. At all. At all. At all. 100%. You know, my husband dated someone for like six years before we met. And I don't really think about her much anymore because, I mean. I won that prize in hell. So, <laughs> but like when I first started dating him, like there was a, there was a moment, like it was like right after we started dating, they had a very contentious breakup. Like it was, it was messy. But um, I went uh, back to like his college town or whatever. They had like a weekend down there. We were going to party and I go and I had to like sit across. We all went out to dinner together, like with a big group of people. I ended up having to sit across the table from her. And I just thought to myself later on, I was like, if I can get through that, I can get through anything. You know, <laughs> if I can just be as nice as I can be. While I'm just, yeah. you know, in, in the most uncomfortable situation. So I, I just think, you know, if you, it's mind over matter with something like that, you've just got to talk yourself through it. As much as that sucks to know you got to do the work, fuck it. <laughs> you know, one time I did get to see one girl get a, you know how you say you're never going to get an answer to that? Cause I've yeah. been watching that stupid Bridezilla because I'm still doing it because they're still in season. <laughs> but I'm like back in the old days where they had like sidekicks or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, the phones, the sidekicks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like yelling on them. But anyways, mm -hmm. I um, love it. They get, there's a marriage boot camp for Bridezilla's they get to do in one season. And one of the girls is like, she won't let it go that she doesn't because the kind of women his wife or her husband dated before and how they looked. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't think he's truly attracted to my body, my body, especially now that I have kids. Da, da, da. They get to lie detector day. Oh, no. And this motherfucker passes with flying colors. <laughs> Yes, see, shut up. Yes, <laughs> walk around naked, get in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Show me them titties. <laughs> I kind of knew he was going to pass because when they told him mm -hmm. what his question was, he mm -hmm. like a smile slid across his face. <laughs> like, yeah. Finally. 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 Show me them titties. <laughs> All right. So we've got the second installment for Saddled by Shaw Hart. Um, like I said earlier in the week, make sure you check out all the social media posts and the group in Read Me Romance headquarters and Facebook um, to see her plethora of a black of a backlist she's got. She's got just so many fucking books. Duh. But we're going to go through and promo a ton of them. So make sure you check them all out. She's in Kindle Unlimited. She writes safe romances. Like, just go dive in. You'll find something you like. Um, also, um, this book that you're about to listen to, Saddled, um, it is in the Sequoia Stud Farm series. That is coming out later this year. So be on the lookout for that. And then make sure you enter this week's giveaway, which is the signed paperback. So. And I'll go ahead and put her, like, newsletter sign up if you want to keep because you don't want to forget when that comes out. So you want yes. to sign up for a newsletter mm -hmm. or I'll put our Amazon link as well. And you can follow her on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then whenever it comes out, they will all alert you. Yeah. So all of those it. will be in the show notes. So I guess we'll send you guys in. Let's do it. We'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. Bye. Chapter four. Seth. Her red hair fans out around her head. As I lay her down against the mountain of pillows and blankets under us, she giggles when one of them falls on our heads, and I shove it aside, grinning down at her. We can go inside if you want. I just, I want this to be perfect for you, I tell her, and her whole face softens. It is perfect. She tilts her chin up, and I lean down, capturing her lips with mine. Her legs shift as I settle more comfortably next to her, and I grab one of her thighs and drag it over mine. Her jeans are rough against my fingers, and I wish that I was touching her skin instead. She sighs against my mouth, and I kiss down her neck. I want to feel you, she moans, 
as her fingers stroke over my chest. I reach up, grabbing my shirt and pulling it over my head. I'll give Twyla anything that she wants, especially if it's me. Her hands roam over my chest and down my abs, and my cock hardens against the fly of my jeans. I can't believe that she's finally touching me, that she's looking at me with so much heat and passion in her eyes. I want you, she whispers, and I smile. You have me. She pulls me down to her and kisses me as my fingers go to work on the button of her jeans. I should have done something more romantic than the lanterns. I should have got her flowers or candles. But as Twyla moans against my mouth, I realize that she doesn't care about any of that stuff. She just wants me. God, I will never get tired of that thought. I tug the hem of her shirt up and she arches her back, helping me pull it up and over her head. I toss it to the other corner and look down at her. She's blushing slightly, her hands trying to cover her stomach and breasts. And I smile gently. You're the best thing that I've ever seen. I gained a little more weight while I was away, she says, her cheeks flaming so bright that they're almost the same shade of red as her hair. You're perfect. I love your body, I tell her, kissing her hands as I slowly move them away from her curves. She holds her breath as I kiss her stomach and start trailing more kisses up her body. I want to pull her bra off and play with her breasts, but she's still breathing fast and shallow, and I want her to enjoy this. I need to ease her into it. I cup her face in my hands as our mouths meet again, and as the kiss deepens, I move my hands up, tangling them in her long hair. She moans into my mouth, and her body starts to relax as we make out. Her hands tug at my belt loops, and when she spreads her thighs, I know what she wants. I move between her legs, careful to keep most of my weight on my arms, even as she wraps her legs around the back of my thighs and tries to pull me closer. I should have taken my jeans off, I realize. She starts to rock against my hard length through the denim, and I've never seen anything sexier in my life. I start to circle my hips, rubbing her on my hard bulge as our lips meet again and again. Our tongues tangle, our kisses sloppy. Both of us are inexperienced, and I wonder if she knows that I've never been with anyone before her. I used to be embarrassed about that, but then I met Twyla and I was glad that I hadn't. I only ever wanted to be with Twyla. There's never been anyone but her and there never will be. Her tiny hands start to push up my shoulders and I lift my weight off her, thinking I must have been too heavy. I open my mouth to apologize when her fingers start to undo the buttons on my jeans. Take it off, please. I want to feel you against me, she begs, her voice breathy and her eyes dark with lust. I swear I almost come in my jeans, but I lean back on my knees and do as she asks. I stare down at her while I unzip my pants and she licks her lips. She's trying to kill me. She looks like every wet dream that I've ever had, and I bite back a groan when her hands go to my waist and she starts to help me push down my jeans. I stand, as much as I can, in the cramped treehouse and push my jeans and boxers the rest of the way off. And then I'm standing naked before her. I wonder what she thinks of my body, but when I look at her, she's staring at my dick. It's hard and pointing straight up, the red head almost reaching my belly button. I reach down, giving it a few strokes while she watches. A drop of pre-cum slips out, and I watch as she sits up fully and licks her lips. Can I? She starts, and I hold my breath, wondering what she wants. Can I taste you? She asks shyly, and more pre-cum leaks from my cock. Fuck, Twyla, I say, as my hand tightens around my length. Sorry, I... 
Well, I don't have any experience with all of this, and I just, I'm not mad. I stop her. I want you to do whatever you want to me. But you know that you don't have to, right? I want to, she admits. And her eyes go back to my dick. Okay, I say. And it feels like my heart is going to explode out of my chest. Twyla crawls over to me. And I have to grip my teeth to stop from coming then and there. Her tits jiggle and sway inside her pretty bra as she moves. And I can't wait to get my hands and mouth on them. I have to close my eyes when I feel my balls starting to tingle. My hand is still wrapped around my cock when suddenly I feel something flick against my fingers. I jerk, looking down to see Twyla on her knees before me, her little pink tongue licking up my length as she explores me. I groan as she does it again. Her hair is a tangled mess around her head, and I gather it together, holding it out of the way so I can see her more clearly. She opens her mouth, and her tongue takes its first lick on the tip of my cock. We both moan. And the next thing I know, she's opened her mouth wider and taken half my length into her mouth. My knees grow weak, and I have to force my hands from tightening even further in her hair. She bobs her head up and down my length, sucking as she goes. I've never gotten a blowjob before, only wanting to do these things with Twyla, but already, I'm seeing what the hype is all about. This feels incredible, better than I could have ever imagined. I'm close again, but I don't want to come in her mouth. I tilt her head back, stepping away from her as she looks up at me. Your turn, I say, as I kneel in front of her. I lay her back down in the center of the treehouse. She still has her jeans on, and I make quick work of unbuttoning them and pulling them and her panties down her legs. Her panties are soaked, and pride swells in me. I lick my lips already anticipating burying my face against that wet flesh. She spreads her legs wider, and I take that as my cue, crawling up the blankets in between her legs. I push her knees wider, settling my shoulders between her thighs. I need you, Twyla, I whisper as I breathe her in. I need you too, Seth, she says, as she tangles her fingers in my hair. I rub my lips back and forth across the inside of her thighs, and she moans at the sensation. I love that I can make her feel so good. I kiss the inside of her thigh before I reach up and spread her lips with my fingers. Her center is so wet and pink, and I can't hold back any longer. I start slow, giving her long licks up her pussy and swirling around her hard button. Her hips start to rock against my face, and her moans get louder and louder. Those cries of pleasure only spur me on. And I start to pick up my pace, eating at her with a hunger I've never felt before. I lick her up the core one last time, before I suck her little nub into my mouth, flicking it with my tongue. She comes undone then, and her body tenses, as she shouts my name into the dark night sky. I rub my face against her sex one last time, wanting as much of her passion on my face as possible. She twitches against me and I pull back, kissing my way up her body. I stop at her tits, finally undoing her bra and getting my hands on her curves. I roll a nipple between my thumb and forefinger while I take the other one in my mouth. I tease her nipples until their hard, sensitive peaks. I pull back and admire her rosy skin as I slide up her body. She smiles dreamily up at me and lifts her lips up, molding her mouth to mine. We fall back on the blanket together and my thick erection lines up with her wet flesh. I pull away, needing to check one last time. Are you sure? I ask. Yes, absolutely. I kiss her again as I start to slowly rock my hips against hers. 
I gather her juices on my length. And once her hips start rocking to meet my thrusts, I line up with her opening and slowly push inside of her. My dick slowly pushes into her until I feel her barrier. I've been dreading this part. The thought of hurting my sweet girl makes me sick. But I know there's no way around this. I'm sorry, Twyla. It will all just hurt for a minute. Let me know if it's too much and we'll stop, okay? I promise we'll stop. She nods up at me, her eyes wide, and her fingers digging into my biceps. I kiss her again as I push through her virginity and seat myself fully inside of her. She tenses under me, and I hold myself still. She feels like heaven, and I can feel my eyes rolling back in my head. When her hips shift under me, I have to fight not to come instantly. She pants under me and I lean down, sucking one of her tits back into my mouth. I nip and suck her tight peaks until her hips start to rock against mine. Seth, she breathes, and I love the way that she says my name. I slide my hips back, pulling almost all the way out before I pause and push back in. Feeling her silky heat wrapped around me is the single best feeling of my life. I swear my eyes roll back in my head as I sink back into her. We start at a slow and steady pace until Twyla starts to beg into my ear, pleading with me to go faster, deeper, harder. Sweat coats our bodies, helping us glide together, and I start to pick up my pace as a tingling starts at the base of my spine. I'm not going to last long, and I need to make sure that my sweet girl finishes before I do. I bring my fingers between us as I balance on my other arm. Finding her clit, I rub my fingers in circles over it, pushing down slightly. She moans my name at the sensation of my fingers on her sensitive nub. And when I pinch it between my fingers, she explodes. Seth, she screams as her orgasm slams into her. And seeing her coming on my cock and hearing her moans of pleasure triggers my own release. Her pussy tightens and pulses around my heart length, and I tense as her pussy massages the cum from my balls. I erupt inside of her with a hoarse shout, shooting load after load of hot cum into her waiting warmth. My arms give out, and I almost collapse on top of her. But I roll us at the last second. Our chests rise and fall together as we both catch our breath. The sweat cools on our bodies as we both finally calm down. I love you, Twyla, I whisper against the top of her head, and her pussy tightens around my length. I love you too. When she leans up and starts kissing me as her hips begin to rock, I grin. I'm one lucky bastard. Chapter 5 Twyla Last night was the best night of my life. I woke up in Seth's arms, and it was the best start of a day to my life. Well, actually, what he did after we were awake was the best way to start my day. I blush just thinking about how he had gone down on me until I came against his mouth. Twice! I have to bite my lip from squealing as I head back across the field to my dad's house. But I still can't stop thinking about everything that we did last night. The way his calloused hands worshipped my body, or all of the sweet things that he whispered in my ear. I had tried to return the favor, but he stopped me. He was going to head over to the stud farm and tell them that he was taking a few days off so that we could spend more time together, and I wanted to head home and grab a few changes of clothes. I yawn as I head for home. We stayed up most of the night, making love and talking about the future. It was eye-opening to hear all of the things that he had noticed about me over the years, 
and more about his childhood. It sounds like he was just as lonely as me, and I'm determined to make sure that he never has to be alone again. I'm still smiling when I walk in the back door, but that quickly changes when I run right into my father. Where have you been? He booms down at me, and I shrink back against the door. I've never seen him this angry before, at least not since I was 15 and told him that I wasn't going to go out with one of his friend's sons. He had screamed at me that night, calling me useless and a brat. I always knew that he has a temper, which is why I've always just gone with whatever he demands. It seemed easier that way. I've never wanted to stand up to him. I've never had a reason worth fighting my father on, but now, with Seth, I finally do. I won't let him break us up. Not when I'm finally getting everything I want. I was with Seth Avery. He's the foreman over at the stud farm. I know who he is, my father yells, and I take another step back, bumping into the back door that I just walked through. I love him, I say quietly. I don't want him to see how afraid of him I am. I know that he feeds off people's fear. He gets off on it. No, you don't, he states firmly. You don't know what you want. You've always been a silly little girl. I didn't realize that you were also a whore. Is that something that you picked up at college? He sneers. I know that I love him, I say, squaring my shoulders. And he grabs my wrists, turning me and dragging me down the hallway to the stairs. Ow! I wince, trying to twist away from him. But he only tightens his hold on me. You will not be running around with riffraff. That is not how I raised you. He snarls over his shoulder. You didn't raise me at all. I snap back at him, and his fingers twist on my wrist in response. Tears spill over my cheeks, and I bite my lip to hold in my sob. I want Seth. I wish that he was here. He would take care of me and handle my father. Better yet, I wish that I had never left him or our special place. Then none of this would have happened. I should have seen this coming. Usually my father never pays much attention to me. I've been coming and going from that treehouse my entire life and have only run into him a handful of times. I should have known that one of those times would be today. He won't ever let me have anything good. The tears come faster now as I think about never seeing Seth again. Will he wonder what happened to me? Will I be able to tell him? Or will my father intercept him and tell him some kind of lie about where I am? You will meet the Russo's son tonight at dinner. Until then, he says, tossing me into my room. You will stay here. With that... He slams the bedroom door, and I hear the lock turn from the outside. I hated when he turned my doorknob around so that he could keep me locked away in here. I had almost forgotten about it. I throw myself onto the bed, sobbing into the overstuffed pillow that the last interior designer picked out. I always hated the thing, but it wasn't worth the fight with my father to get rid of it. I've never wanted to fight with my father. I always knew that it wouldn't get me anywhere. But now, I finally have a reason to fight. I don't want a life with one of the boys that my father selects for me. I don't care about money or prestige or any of that. I just want Seth. I want to live with him and laugh with him. I want to have kids with him and grow old with him. And I don't care if we're firmly middle class for the rest of our lives. I wipe my nose off on the pillow. A small fuck you to my father. And then sit up on the bed. I don't want this life I never did. But now I finally have something else to choose. I'm choosing my happiness. I'm choosing Seth. 
I crawl to the edge of the bed and slip off. Before I can think this through, I open the window and slip one leg over the edge. I've followed my head my entire life. For once, I'm choosing to follow my heart. I slowly crawl out onto the roof and make my way over to the lattice trellis on the side of the house. The ivy is a little slick beneath my feet and hands as I start to climb down and grip the rails tighter. My wrist is killing me, and I can see that a bruise is already forming where my father grabbed hold of me. I jump down the last few feet and rub my wrist. I'm sure that my father is upstairs in his office, probably calling the Russos to invite them for dinner. I sneak over to the side of the house and then start running. I jog across the open field and disappear into the safety of the trees. I'm sure that Seth is still over at the stud farm, so I head in that direction. The tears are dried on my cheeks, but I still wipe my eyes and face off as I head up toward one of the barns. I can see Kai working there, and he waves when he sees me. Hey there, Twyla. Welcome back home. He greets me with a wide grin and I smile weakly back at him. Hey, Kai. Have you seen Seth? I ask. And he opens his mouth to answer me. Twyla. Seth calls from behind me and I spin around to see him. He looks so happy to see me and the tears start again. What's wrong? Seth asks right away and I burst into tears. The next instant, I'm in his arms. And for the first time in the last hour, it feels like everything is going to be all right. Chapter 6 Seth She's trembling in my arms, and I know that I'm going to kill whoever made her feel like this. My girl should never be anything but happy. It doesn't take a genius to know that this must have something to do with her dad. She was headed back home when I left her this morning. And I'm pretty sure he would be the only one in that big ugly house to reduce my sweetheart to tears. What happened? Tell me, Twyla, and I'll fix it. I promise her. And she wraps her arms tighter around my waist. I look up and see Kai glaring off in the direction of her house. I can hear Grizz mumbling behind me about what a prick her dad is, and I have to agree. The few times that I've met the man, I was surprised that he didn't trip. Not with the way he walked around with his nose stuck up in the air. It made me want to trip him. He won't let us be together, Twyla says into my shirt, and I tighten my hold on her. He can't stop us. We're both adults. He was so mad, she whispers. And I see red. Did he hurt you? Threaten you? I ask, my voice coming out hard. Kai, Grizz, and Wyatt all step forward with angry looks on their faces. And I know that if he did, they'll help me hide his body. Remy jogs over to us, his face full of concern as he sees Twyla crying into my chest and I see Kai lean over to fill him in on what we know so far. Then, he looks just as pissed off as the rest of us. He grabbed my wrist, Twyla says, pulling back from me slightly to rub at her right arm. It's then that I see the red marks and bruises already forming there. One of the brothers swears, and I grit my teeth. He locked me in my room, she continues and I want to bury her against my chest again. But I can see that she needs to get through this. My sweet girl is so strong, and she doesn't even realize it. I want her to know that I will always fight for her, for us. He wants me to meet one of his friend's sons. I'm sure that he's rich and unbearable. And I don't want to meet him. I don't want to be with him. She says, looking up at me with teary eyes. You won't. You don't have to go back there, I assure her. And she looks so damn hopeful that it breaks my heart. I hate thinking about her locked away in that big empty house. 
She must have been so lonely all of these years. And I never want her to feel that way again. I love you, Twyla. I will forever. Marry me. We can live in the cabin or I'll build us a treehouse. She laughs at that, fresh tears spilling onto her cheeks. I just want to make you happy. I just want you, I tell her, using my thumbs to wipe away her tears. What if you change your mind? Never gonna happen, I promise her. Doesn't she see that she's my whole world? How can she think that I would ever not want her? You're it for me, Twyla. I told you last night that if you left again, I was following you and I meant it. I would follow you to the ends of the earth. I can see Grizz grinning at me, and Kai looks over to Wyatt, mouthing the word, finally. He's right. I should have made Twyla mine the day she turned 18. But I thought that she wanted to go to college. Now that I know how miserable she's been, I need to change it. I'm never letting you go. I don't want you to, Twyla says, throwing her arms around my neck. I smile down at her. Does that mean that you're marrying me? Yes, she whispers against my lips, and I grin. All of the brothers let out a whoop, and I laugh as I crush Twyla to my chest and spin her around. Her giggles fill my ears, and I promise myself that I will make her laugh every day of our lives. We can help you move in. We'll go get your things so you don't have to see your dad again, Grizz offers and I tuck Twyla against my side. She opens her mouth to say something, and that's when I see her father's dumb sports car racing down the drive. He slams on the brakes, sending up a cloud of dust, and then he's stomping over toward us, a furious look on his face. Get in the car, he snaps at Twyla, and I push her behind me so that he can't get to her. Wyatt, Grizz, Remy, and Kai all line up by my sides. And I know that there's no way that he's getting through all of us. Daniel Gray seems to realize that too. Because his fists clench at his sides, but he doesn't come any closer. Twyla! He snaps out. His voice like a whip. And I feel Twyla's hands tighten in the fabric of my shirt. She presses against my back, and I reach a hand back, trying to comfort her. I'm not going with you, she says, taking my hand and stepping around me. I squeeze her hand, and she gives me a grateful look before she turns back to her father. Seth and I are engaged, she informs him. Her father looks pissed, but there's something else there. It looks a lot like fear in his eyes, and I wonder what that's about. He's probably afraid of losing the power and control that he's had over Twyla up until now. No, you're not, Daniel says, and I glare at him. We are. I love your daughter. No one will ever love her more than me or treat her better, I vow, and he glares at me, looking disgusted with my notion of love or taking care of those who matter to me. I'm sure that they're foreign concepts to him. If you do this, Twyla, then you're nothing to me. I won't give you another cent. You will be disowned, he threatens. And I look over to Twyla. I was expecting her to be upset by what he said, but she just smiles sadly at him. I'm already nothing to you. You've never cared about me. So do whatever you have to. He looks startled, and I'm sure that he wasn't expecting that answer. He opens his mouth to say something else, but Wyatt cuts him off. You heard her. Now get lost. I can't help but grin, and Daniel sputters before he turns on his heel and stalks back to his car. I can hear him cursing under his breath, but I just watch him go. As soon as his car has disappeared... I turn and pull Twyla against me. I'm so proud of you, 
I whisper against her ear and she hugs me tighter. I should have stood up to him a long time ago. You gave me the courage to say all of that. I love you, Twyla. That's good. <laughs> because we're engaged, she says with a giggle, and I smile. Oh, and because I love you too. Chapter 7 Twyla Five Years Later Mama! My son, Rylan, shouts as he runs into the kitchen and wraps his little arms around my leg. Hey, little one! I coo down at him, and he grins up at me. He just turned four a week ago, and I still can't believe how big he's gotten. It feels like just yesterday I was rocking him in my arms, and we were getting back from the hospital. Hey, Seth says with a smile as he joins us in the kitchen. He drops a kiss on my lips first, before he kneels and kisses my round belly. I'm six months pregnant with our second, and I feel like I'm as big as a house. Seth makes me feel beautiful, though, and he still can't keep his hands off me. I got to play with Kaylee and Morgan, Rylan tells me, as Seth helps him up onto one of the kitchen stools. Oh, yeah? Did you have fun? Rylan nods, but he's distracted now that Seth is peeling him an orange. I smile as I watch my husband with our son. They look so much alike. Rylan has Seth's dark brown hair, with just a hint of my red hair as highlights. He got Seth's green eyes, and I'm sure that he's going to get his height, too. Seth says that he hopes that our daughter looks just like me. But I wouldn't hate to have another mini Seth running around. My husband is attractive, after all. Seth and I got married a month after I moved in with him. It was a small wedding, just the stud farm guys and us. But it was still a dream come true. In a twist of fate, or maybe just karma, my father lost everything. Turns out that he had made a few bad investments and was swimming in debt. That's why he was pushing me so hard to go for the Russo's son. He was hoping that I would be able to bail him out once I was married into a wealthy family. When that didn't happen, he had to sell the house. Last I heard, he had moved into some cheap apartment a few miles outside of Sequoia. I haven't talked to him in years, though. And that's the way Seth and I like it. Things have been perfect since I moved in with Seth. He treats me like a queen, and I know that he loves me just as much as I love him. He still works as the foreman for the Ford brothers over at the stud farm, and we still live in the cabin by the treehouse, though we've added a new extension on it now that we're growing our family. Can I spend the night at Morgan's? Rylan asks, and Seth looks at me. Morgan is Grizz and his wife, Monty's daughter, and Kaylee is Kai and Oakley's. They're both close in age to Rylan, and they love to play together. They're even in the same preschool class. And it's been nice being able to take turns carpooling so that we're not always driving in and out of town. Sure, honey. As long as it's okay with Grizz and Monty, I add. Rylan cheers and starts to head back outside with Seth following right after him. You and me. Tonight. Treehouse. Seth whispers against my ear as he passes me. And I grin. It's a date. This has been Saddled by Shaw Hart. Read for you by Ramona Master. Welcome back, lady listeners. Hey, lady listeners. Thank you so much to Shaw Hart for being with us this week and bringing us Saddled. We really appreciate it. And exciting news, Cameron Hart's with us next week. They are so cool. They have like, uh, they planned this so they could go back to back. And oh. they actually have like this, uh, I think they have something that they were working on together. I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to say, oh. but um, I'll ask Cameron for next week. And if, and if I can say it, I'll talk about it then. So, um, so yeah, make sure um, you join us back here next week for Cameron Hart and uh, just more brand new audio books. 
That's awesome. it. Awesome. All right. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me.